What's, What's going, going on, guys? guys? I'm Levita Josue. I'm Antonio Wache. And this is Comra, where we do nerdy reviews with, with the occasional boost. So we all know that the Crisis on Infinite Earths was an event to make sure that we don't have doppelgangers or multiple versions of the same characters out here confusing the new readers or new Arrowverse watchers. The CW, however, is doing the exact opposite. So, up until now, Batwoman and Supergirl have strayed completely away from the subject of multiple Earths and waited until the Crisis on Infinite Earths event to bring it to the forefront of their own shows. Does anyone else feel like they're not taking enough time to get the characters comfortable with this idea though? How long do you think it would take you to grasp the idea of a multiple world theory? Let us know in the comment section. Black Lightning got right back to business as usual because even though the Spectre had an incredible amount of power, he didn't even look over at Freeland, focused on Star City only, when Freeland was literally in a bubble of hatred, war crimes, and social injustice. Jefferson broke into the bubble and then goes to work finishing what he started episodes ago. It's like the writers realize that there's often larger struggles going on in the world, but the disenfranchised are just too worried about what's going on at their own level to even take a look at the bigger picture. Or do they just not want to explain the theory of multiple Earths? Is that woke or witless? Who knows? So Batwoman wasted no time in reasserting itself as the very gay, very message-driven show that it is. Uh, I generally love me some representation, especially in a medium like this that's getting all the attention that it is. Comics are wild right now. But it needs to make sense. I feel like if you have a room full of writers, you should be able to create something that's logical and realistic as opposed to just shoehorning in a race or a sexual orientation just because it's a hot topic at the moment. Batwoman should be putting as much space as possible between her two alter egos instead of being so courageous that she endangers all the people in her life. There's so much I have a problem with when it comes to this show. I feel like, you know what? Everything from the fact that there was a villainess in one episode who had a better voice changer than Batwoman to the fact that she was supposed to be typing in a, a password that said waffles and she was typing in numbers. We saw it. She was typing in numbers. Don't, don't even at me because I checked it. It's numbers. It's wrong. Just, you know what? I can't, because if, if I stay on this too long, it's just gonna be a whole video about us just ranting and ragging on Batwoman, and that's not gonna be great for the comments. Levita, get in here. Hey look, Batwoman might have had its faults, but at least we can lean on Arrow. Things are moving along pretty quickly, and they got their bows aimed at the future. The year 2040 to be exact. So this time around, it's not the gloomy dystopian city that we see, it's actually Star City from a sociolite stream. Which is a welcome change from the Star City that we saw in the Flash Forwards last season, which proved that Oliver's sacrifice was for a reason. But since nothing good ever lasts in a comic book world, that utopia is soon shattered and the legends bring world to the future to fix a couple things before they get a little too far off track. There are definitely a few details that could end up being plot holes, but we're just getting started. So this episode is a backdoor pilot for Green Arrow and the Canaries, and even though before watching this I was certain this was something that I didn't need, and I feel like nobody needed, um, I feel like this is actually coming to be a really interesting show. The changes that Oliver created in the storyline uh, just brought up a lot of possibilities that could make sense as to why Star City needed a 20 year jump to really get into the superhero game or the vigilante game to say. So, there's so much to talk about between now and before the season's end. True. And, Legends just started their season, so we're never without a topic. But, we always have some questions, so make sure that you let us know what you thought of all the shows after Crisis. No talk. Did you enjoy how the Crisis ended? Or, were you upset that they killed Oliver like 300 times? Right? Yeah. And, I, I'm, I'm definitely curious, are you done with the Crisis as a whole, or are you excited for the next year's crossover? Who knows? Let us know in the comments. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it out with all your friends and family. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a single thing we got coming. I'm Levita Josue. I'm Antonio Ache. And this is Comrom, and we'll see you guys in the next video.